I told him I would do it. And I took faith, just went. Unfortunately, I'm a member of the church. How can the church take a business outside when I'm a member? So I went to the chairman, a uh, person to be, uh, please, I want to print this. I don't have the machine, but if you are able to give me the order, I'll find the machine. I got um, the order, and then I just contacted a friend. He enabled me, got the machine. And so the name was appointed time. I just used that circumstance to create the name. <laughs> I did not struggle about it, going to look for a name, that this is the right time, appointed time. You see, the easiest thing that Jesus can do is for you to create something out of nothing. Sometimes people want to create business. They need a name. They will need so many sophisticated business plan. I'm telling you, those are very, very good. But when you have the Holy Spirit, he doesn't need those processes. He cut the protocols and give you what. And then later, you then dignify it with those protocols. So learn how to create things out of no, nothing. And so we created a point time. Through this, it magnifies, and as we speak now, every election of every political season, we print most of the T-shirt in Ghana. I went to a place. Um, I was supplying stationery, and they asked that they want a contractor to just construct something for them. I told them I can do it. <laughs> and... Uh, Uh, and let me tell you how it works. So I took the, the contract. I told them, oh, this is normal thing I've been doing all the time. <laughs> so they gave me the order. And what the first people I could just remind of was church members. That the church members, some of the members were contractors, masons, artisans. So I went to church Sunday. How many artisans are here? How many masons? I just called them. I have a job. Let's go and do it. So we went there, and we used them and executed. Out of that, we, we did a very excellent job. So I created excellent construction. <laughs> you see. And this company have developed, developed to this level. Out of nothing, out of visibility, and then it came to life. Now, in the year 2005, there was a serious problem in the country of Ghana about waste management. And this is how it happened. The cereal, the pro there were problems. This was the sanitation issues. Serious, very problem. The government was crying. Everybody was shouting. And I went to a place to, for fasting, as Matt was saying, fasting for five days. I was praying. In fact, there were some challenges in the business. Uh, so as the business developed and other competition forcing, you might have challenges. So I went to pray, a place to pray. And in the prayer, I saw a very edifice building used in collecting waste. I know nothing about it. I, know in it. I don't have any idea, clue about it. So I said, God, what is it? A very big edifice. But that place is used in cutting waste. So when I came and these issues, I went to approach government and look, I can solve this problem. But before that, I went to government, I went to the bank to take a loan to buy printing equipment to expand my machine. And I decided to go to China because that place was cheap where you can get, it's a, uh, you can get a printing equipment very cheaper. Uh, I think a reasonable price. The European ones and American ones were very, very expensive. So when I went to China, then I saw some tricycles. Some tricycles there. I saw these tricycles there. So I bought one and then put it into a container, a part container, and then brought it to Ghana to show to the ministers and everybody. They said, no, this thing cannot work. We can't use tricycle to work in 2006. But when the Holy Spirit drops something in you, he will give you the unction and the power to make sure that it's perfected. So only listen to the voice of the Spirit, not listen to the voice of men. So when it drops, I bought one and then started showcasing it to them. Everybody rejected it. I went and used the money, told the bankers, bought more. And then started distributing to every region of Ghana. We have 10 regions to try it. Six months, everybody was trying it. And they tried and tried and tried. 
Now they go to the point that I told them, look, don't worry. Just give me some people of you, of the youth. I'll train them, clothe them, and then they dignify them for them to work. Don't pay me. I did a trial for one year. And then government says, he want to buy the tricycles. I said, no, I don't want to sell it. I want to manage it for you. Just give me a number of millions of people. I'll just manage it. And that is what I've metaphorized to a plant like this. We have now processed the waste. We are managing about 45,000 people. We are in about six countries out of waste. And so I said that they saw fault, but I saw a fortune through the Holy Spirit. Out of nothing, waste smells. It's not dignified. It's dirty. It's because of waste I'm standing here talking to you. But with my mathematics... In every mathematics, it can never go to this level. But today, this is how far the Lord has brought us. We, are, we have dignified, and we are the only company in the West Africa that have something like this. We have about 50,000. We have a university that we have um, set up in collaboration with Kane University. Quite recently, I was appointed as an, a member of the advisory board of Harvard University. I was there when they wrote to me that they want to appoint me. I said, how did you locate me? How did you found me? When the Holy Spirit dignified you and magnified you, that is how it comes. So I want to encourage everyone here that God has called us into a wealthy family, a dignified family. And everything that we set up to do, the Lord, there has no limit of how far he could take us. So what we have to do is to do this. So currently we are, into, we are in this country and I want to touch on what will help your business to grow that we've just read about um, the wisdom God gives. Uh, sometimes when I'm moving, when I'm walking, when I'm bathing, then something drops. Then I write it down and I start working on it. Now, this is the wealth of Solomon. The wealth of Solomon, Solomon received 20 tons of gold yearly. The kings of Arabia and governors province also brought gold and silver. By estimation by researchers, the wealth of Solomon was $2.3 million. That no one, so when God says that, I will give you wisdom and understand that no one on this health will ever have. It shows that when God makes you rich, you will continue to be wealthy. So the blessing of the Lord makes a man's rich is real and it's true that we must hold and then encourage the generations to come. In business, you must have ethics, ethics, and certain culture and principles. And Joseph can teach us, Titus can teach us. Joseph said, no one here has more authority than I do. He has held back nothing from except you because you are my wife. We all know about Potiphar's wife who wanted to just arrange for Joseph. He says, how could I do such a wicked thing? It will be a great sin against God. So when you are doing business, you want you to grow, you add the godly factor. You add the godly factor. Your principles and everything. Titus says that, and you yourself must be an example by doing good works for every kind of teaching. Let everything you do reflect in the integrity and seriousness. So ethics. These are the ethics I humbly want to show. Have a covenant with God in Titan. Titan. Don't own your business. Let the business be to God and be a steward. In everything that you do, let God pay your taxes, give to Caesar, to Caesar, and then to God, to God. Comply with business rules and regulations of the country, whatever that conforms to business rules, so that you are not being arrested. The next day, you are not being castigated of just siphoning certain things. Preserve God's creation in our business dealings, in your business dealings. Environment. Protect the environment. Everything God has created, try also that you be a steward to handle it. Then support the vulnerable. Then the last one, be honest with internal and external customers. Your internal customers are your staff. As Matt was saying, be very honest with them. Dealing with them. Taking care. Be a servant and serve them. Their interests should be number one. And then your external customers, treat them very well. I want to humbly talk about the net network. And I want you to look at this picture. 
I was looking at it, and I want you to just read it yourself. According to Congressional Budget Export a Report of the 2007 U.S. wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, it cost $2.4 trillion. I want you to look at some monies that are being mentioned. And then over 448, 6, 4, 4, 448 people have died. One million Americans were injured out of the 2.5 million that went to war in both wars. In the UK, the UK, UK government also went to war. And according to the report, the sources of all these things are there. That 2003 to 2009, they spent 8.4 billion pounds in Iraq. Afghanistan and Iraq combined is 20.3 billion pounds. Pentagon spends $250 million a day on war. 2000 Libya, 2011 Libya mission costs more than $1 billion. The Tehran nuclear program has cost more than $100 billion. I yearn to have $100 billion to support the kingdom business. If this money is being spent on this, my prayer is, how can we have worldly people in the kingdom so that we can expand the kingdom business? When I saw this, I was crying and praying that, oh Lord, let me have billions and to spread the good news, to support the ministry, to support Empower 21. Holy Spirit, enable me, if countries can organize this, you can do better than this. You can be, so it should be your prayer for me, or our prayer together. Yeah. <laughs> I yearn to have this money. It's my plea that pray for me, or let's all pray together. <laughs> Which one is your choice? We should pray together. <laughs> and that is what is the network means. That let us hold ourselves together. Let us pray together. Let us work together. And I want you to look at the script here. I was looking at this and the Holy Spirit opened my eyes more. It says, all the believers were in one heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own. But they shared everything they had. With great power of the Holy Spirit, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerful at work in them all that there were no needy persons. Needy persons. If apostles and prophets tried to proclaim the message of the Holy Spirit about wealthiness and impact generations, there will never be needy persons in our churches. Amen. You will not be praying for poverty people and poor people because the power of the Holy Spirit will bring that power. And he says that from time to time, meaning that is a process, from time to time, some will be rich today, the next day some others will be rich. It's time to time. We will all know be wealthy one day, but through the process, it's time to time. Those who own land and houses, land owners, not squatters, owners, <laughs> sold them, brought the money from the sales, and then they bring the money to the apostles' feet. So, if you are a man of God and you are an apostle and you are a minister of God, if your focus is to make sure that your church, you train them and teach them to impart worthy and success in this generation, you will not follow money, but they will bring the money to your feet. That is what the Holy Spirit opened my eyes. Apostles, pastors don't chase money. When you are running crusade, you don't go and seek money. When you want to build your temple, you don't go and chase money. Just impart the people with the message of wilderness and they will bring the money to your feet. You will not follow money. Money will come to your feet. So in this generation, we must then build the network that the South African church and the church in Ghana, businessmen will unite and work together with one mind and with one heart that we want to lift the kingdom of God. And that will bring the 100 billion and 200 billion. And that apostles will sit down and will bring the money to their feet. 
So the business network is a platform created for businessmen in the church that how do we network ourselves? I'm glad that I want to announce that in January 2016, Professor Pokunina, the chairman of Church of Pentecost, helped us, the church led by his leadership, we form the business network. And what we do is that we all businesses in Canada, in the UK, and everything, I've traveled all those places. You see, Africa, Africa is stem as a riskier places for investment. When you go to Europe and other places and you're looking for money, you struggle. Because look, political stability, economic crisis, poverty, malaria, cholera, Ebola, these are our flagship. How do we create it then? Let we Africans become united ourselves. And we can combine and do. No one can create wealth for us. If we are combined and we just have one mind, one we can do. Because God has imparted into us every resources, gold, diamond, every mineral is in Africa. Now Africa is a basket of wealth in this, in this world. Every country is looking at China is coming to Africa. America is coming to Europe is coming to Africa. Meanwhile, we, the Africans, are crying that we are poor. What is that kind of mindset? When we come together, the Holy Spirit will spark a fire among us. Because wherever they met together in Acts chapter 2, it's together that, that brought that sparking of fire. So when we are together, we will change the world. So this is a network that Professor Opokunina led us, and that has brought this. We have about 1,000 members, and it's very simple. We collect all the data of all the businesses of the members, and then we trade among ourselves, share ideas. Professionals, some of them are in the UK. When I get a contract, I call them, come and help me. So some of them are not just equity. You don't contribute, but we have professional doctors. I want to meet into the medical center. We have a professional member who is in South Africa. How beautiful will you look like? When I have a business in Ghana today, I network with some businessmen here and bring some business there. They also bring some professionals there, doctors, engineers. Every profession that we have in the church must be utilized to the glory of God. And this is what this platform is. It's not about contributing money. It's not about equity. But just networking and knowing ourselves better. Now, Genesis 11 says, look, they said, the people are united and they speak the same language. The heavenly language. After this, nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. So when we are together, 500 billion will be easy. We can raise 500 billion. We can raise 300 billion. And Power 21 and other ones, we can sponsor, we can do so many things. We will have worthy people that we don't need to go to outside. And I humbly want to say that. Thank you very much. May the Lord bless you. That you impart generations that you will be one of the worthy person. And your members will be a worthy person. Thank you very much. <laughs> that was awesome. I'm mesmerized by Joseph. Thank you very much. And may the Lord bless you. Uh, that verse uh, at the end, you gave it a, a new insight. And I thank God for it, that nothing when we are together can be uh, beyond us. I would like now to introduce another uh, brother who is going to share. And please remember, uh, for those who come from uh, Apostolic Faith Mission and their pastors, uh, there are points that you are going to get for attending these sessions. So if there are forms, the attendance forms that have been circulated, uh, please fill them and then uh, forward them to the front. And then after the session, you can go uh, to the eye desk where you can get a stamp to prove that you've been here so that you are uh, credited with a pastor's continuous development. So that's what we do, Professor, in the church. We encourage pastors to participate in this session so that they develop and they can go back to their congregations and develop, develop them. Now, uh, uh, Charles Ngubeni, he's also an author, a serial entrepreneur, a talk show host, 
an international business coach, and a pastor. Charles holds a secondary teacher's diploma, then he got a science education, a BSc, and also an MBA with the University of Vets. He completed his ministerial training with the Rema Bible College in Renbeck and was ordained as a pastor of Miracle Valley Churches in March 2010. He currently runs a taxi business, Wimpy Restaurants, a Sassol fuel station, and he also has a beauty care cosmetics company. He owns Kuisa Guest House. He owns uh, equity in a number of mining houses and also some uh, listed companies on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Uh, I was privileged to be a guest uh, on his show, a television show that he runs, which, call, which is called Marketplace with Charles on TBN. So he attributes his success to tithing and giving. He also has a long CV, I'll, I'll just stop there, and uh, ask us to put our hands together and welcome Pastor Charles Ngubeni to speak to us. Greetings in the powerful name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, empowered for business. Empowered for business. You know, I enjoyed um, the presentation of Matt, and uh, let me call him Doc, uh, Dr. Joseph, for my own simplicity. <laughs> and uh, for the sake of time, uh, I'm just going to rush and move. Um, empowered for business. Uh, it has already been said, I am Charles Ngobeni, and uh, I have got my own um, TV show, and uh, everything has been said. I do have some of my products, Footprints of a Legend, which is uh, one of my many books. Um, this is from my humble beginning, from nothing to something. If God can do it for me, he can do it for any one of us. I have uh, this one, unlocking the, the success code. Unlocking the success code, I've got 12 traits of the highly successful people. I looked into successful people, I studied them, and I googled them. I wanted to see what makes them tick, because God is not a respecter of persons. Then I realized that if they can make it, I can also make it. So I have documented all what they're doing, and if you can do what they do, you are guaranteed success as well. And uh, that one goes along with... <laughs> sorry, sorry. It goes along with a workbook, and uh, I, I, I know the workbook will bless you. It has been said that I'm on... Uh, I'm on TBN, and my show is recorded, and I've got DVDs as well. And uh, I've got the best of my DVDs in there. So if you want uh, my, my, my products, uh, Simon is here. He w you, you can get them from him after all this. It has been my pleasure, sir for being invited here to be part of uh, Empower 21. I don't know why you chose me. <laughs> Empower 21, we have got a vision, and we can't, there is no way that we can reach our vision without the money. In fact, this session, no wonder the hall is packed. It is the basis of all the other tracks. You can be so anointed and so powerful, but without the money, we can't go far. I have seen our generals, especially our African brothers, our generals, Bengu, Gidi, Kiliza, you can mention them. They were so powerful, but they are not as much as known 
as some other American pastors today who are on television. The difference, it was the money. If we have the money, we can do more. You see, what I've realized as well is that the devil does not mind if you shout a lot, you make a lot of noise, you fall down, you roll down, you mucus all over, you wake up, you are still dry, and you've got no tangible substance. It is time that we should change our praises, our worship, into something tangible so that we're able to impact the whole world and take the gospel to all the four corners of the world. You see, what I've realized is that whenever I go out with my kids, every Sunday we eat out with my kids. During the week, they go out on their own. And whenever they are on their own, they look into the menu. They only look into the right-hand side of the menu. Then they eat from the right-hand side of the menu. But when I am there, they look into the left-hand side of the menu. When daddy is on the table, we should eat on the left-hand side of the table. I am here to say to you, our daddy, our God, our father, the Holy Ghost is on the table. We are more than well able to eat from the left-hand side of the, of, of the menu. And we can do that. You see, let no person tell you you cannot make it. For we all can make it. Job 14 verses 8 to 9 says, Though its roots may grow old in the earth, and its stump may die in the ground, yet at the scent of the water it will bud. I am here to say to you in this Empower 21 that the Holy Ghost is here. The sand is here. We can all bud and we can all make it. There are seven mountains that have been identified. It's a mountain of religion, mountain of family, education, government, media, arts. But the most important one is a mountain of business. And we have, as Christians, we need to occupy these mountains. If we do not occupy this mountain and control the mountain, we may not make it. We may not be able to win the world. But if we occupy this mountain and be of influence, we'll do something. I looked into one of the states in uh, the state of Texas in America. If you look into the state of Texas, you realize that T.D. Jakes comes from there. Joyce Meyer is there. Kenneth Copeland is there. Andrew Womack is there. Jesse Duplantis is there. John Hagee is there. Robert Morris is there. Daystar TV is from there. And many, many more others. There are a lot of pastors. But the challenge that they have, the state of Texas is the third highest in terms of uh, uh, what, what do we call it, crime rate. They're not impacting simply because they're not occupying the seven mountains. And it is up to us as Christians to occupy this mountain. And one of them, it is a mountain of business. We need to occupy that. And we need to believe God for that. And all I know is that it is possible. It is possible. We can make it. For the blessing of the Lord is upon us. We are the heirs and the joint heirs with Christ. We can make it. God is able. All we have to do, we need to understand that God wants to prosper you and is going to be supernatural. It's going to be by the power of the Holy Ghost. I looked into Psalm 23, verses 1. God is also concerned about your wants as much as it's also concerned about your need. Psalm says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The unfortunate part of it is that when we were grown up, we were told that God is concerned about our needs, not our wants. We had to forget about our wants. But the, my Bible says, my, the Lord, my God, is also concerned about my wants. He is 
my shepherd. I shall not want. Deuteronomy 6, verses 10 to 11 says, So it shall be when the Lord your God brings you into the land of which he has sold to our forefathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you large and beautiful cities which you have did not build, houses full of good things which you do not fill, hewn out wells which you do not dig, vineyards and olive trees which you do not plant. This is what wealth transfer is all about. Understand that God wants to prosper you and is going to be supernatural. If you want to use your own thinking, your own mind, your own strength, you may not make it. It has to be supernatural. Ecclesiastes 2.26 puts it differently. For God gives wisdom and knowledge and joy to a man who is good in his sight. But to a sinner, I love this, he gives work of gathering and collecting that he may give it to him who is good in his own sight. Proverbs 13.22 says, A good man leaves inheritance to his children's children, but the wealth of a sinner is laid up for the just. I am here to say to you, there's a wealth there which is waiting just for you. I am talking here about the wealth transfer. If ever there's a verse that made me to go into mining, it's Isaiah 45, verses 3. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of sacred places that you may know that I, the Lord, who call you by name and I'm God of Israel. There is riches in sacred places waiting for you. Sinners don't know you it. They are waiting for you. But it's up to you to go and grab this wealth. It's not going to come easy. There are some strategies that we need to employ in order to attract this wealth. You see, it doesn't matter who you are, but it matters whose you are. It doesn't matter who you are, but it matters whose you are. You may be born in poverty, but poverty is not born in you. You may be born in lack, but lack is not born in you. We all can be a success in life. There is none of us here who is useless. We can all make it. You know, God has got a funny way of teaching me stuff sometimes. The other time I was in my bathroom, I sit there and I tried to help myself. And I enjoyed myself. But after everything, I had to flush. But when I wanted to flush, just like any one of you, I looked back and checked. I wanted to flush. I was so jealous. Flush, jealous. You know why I was so jealous? Because I realized that people like Dr. Joseph, at the end of the storage line, they are patiently waiting with a bucket <laughs> just to catch my mess <laughs> and turn it into a manure. Ask him, his waste company, they are not throwing it away. They are turning it into a manure. Just for me again to go into pick and pay, shop rice, checkers, and macro to buy the manure for my own garden. I am saying to you, you may think you are a mess, but there is a manure in a mess. You all have what it takes for your success. You know, the other time I was at home, I loved clean house. I looked into one corner of my house. There was a, a spider sitting in a spider web waiting for a catch. And I wanted to kill it. A spider in my house? Making my house dirty? Then I thought of my primary years. All things bright and beautiful. 
all creatures great and small. For the Lord God created them all. Then I said, no, I am not going to kill that. The best I can do is to clean it. I took the feather duster. I cleaned it. But guess what? A few minutes later, I looked into a different corner. The same spider in a new spider web sitting there waiting for a catch. The spider had not gone out of my house. Where did it get the building material from? I realized the spider has got all the building material within itself to rebuild its life. And the Bible says we are worth more than the spiders. Everything that pertains to life and godliness has already been provided for. Has already been provided for. The challenge that we have as Christians is just like when you go to a supermarket. You know, if you go to a supermarket, you can buy bread and milk. You go the following day, you buy bread and milk. And that's what we're doing. We are buying bread and milk from the supermarket. But the very same supermarket also sells custard and jelly from the very same shelf. You pay it upon the very same till. We have been born again. Spirit-filled is bread and milk. We never went back to the supermarket, the very same supermarket where we got saved from for our custard and jelly, which is our financial resources and all that we need to take the gospel forward. I am saying to you, by the birth, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, everything that you need has already been provided for. It's for us to go and grab it and take it. Genesis 13 verses 5 to 10, you know, you read the story there. It tells you it doesn't matter who you are. Anybody can be a success. Anybody can be a success. You look into the Israelites when they left Egypt. God told them, go and borrow from the Egyptians. Because God did not want them to go empty-handed. That is one of the examples of the wealth transfer. In my life, I've seen so many wealth transfer. And for your information, there hasn't been any business, just like uh, the doctor has said, that I've built with money in my pocket. I realize that you do not need money, but all you need is God-given creative ideas. If I were to give you one of the examples, the other time I, I was in partnership with some other guys um, for one business. And now one of my partners has got another business, another partnership. Who went to these other guys? He said, guys, I need money cash. And now they want to take my house, they want to take my car. And then the, the guy said, go ahead and sell your shares. The guy came to me. He said, Charles, I am selling my shares. I need money now. I said, how much? I'm selling it for 150,000 rands. I said, okay, I can't give you 150,000. We need to go to the lawyers and sign the documents and everything. He said, no, I don't have time. The guys are waiting to, do, to repossess my stuff. I said, okay, I'll give you 50,000 rand now. The other 100 will get it after signing. We agreed, I gave him 50,000. He went back to his partners. He told them that, no, I've got 50,000 from Charles. I've sold my shares for 150,000. The, the partner said, no, you can't do that. We have got the first right of refusal. We need those shares back. Then they said, what can we do? Then this guy said, no, it's not a problem. Go and offer him 500,000. Same day, I paid 50,000. They came back and said, no, I need my shares back for 500,000. I said, this must be God. This is the wealth transfer that the Bible is talking about. In the city of Pulukwane here, I bought two Wimpy restaurants same day. By that time, one Wimpy restaurant was worth about 4 million rand. Two of them, I was supposed to pay 8, eight million. I went to the owner. I said, no, I'm offering you 3.5 million. No, 3.5 million. The guy said, no, you are mad. 3.5 for 8 million. I said, no, that's what God told me. He said, no, I can't give it to you. I said, okay, 
If you don't want to give it to me now, I'll get it later, but you'll pay with interest. I went home, I relaxed. Six months later, I'm getting an email from the same guy. I am accepting your offer of 3.3 million for two Wimpies. I said, whoa, but I offered him 3.5. The 200 definitely must be interest. <laughs> I can tell you stories after stories of wealth transfer in my life. So many. The other time I went to Bila Bila in a game reserve. You know, I, I, I've got a site. This other guy has got a site which is worth about 800,000 rand. And now the guy said, no, he's selling the site. I went to his attorneys. They said, no, make an offer. I said, zero. They said, no, but you can't say zero. I said, that's my starting point. It's zero. They went to the guy. They made him an offer of zero. They came back to me. They said, no, Charles, we don't understand what's happening. Something must be wrong. The guy said he has got an arrears of 30,000 rand levy on the site. But the site is worth 800,000. If you can pay the area levy, you can have the site. I paid the area levy. I got the site simply because he was my neighbor. I did not really need the site. I put the site back onto the market for 800,000 the following day. And as I'm speaking, the site is gone. That is wealth transfer. And if God can do it for me, he can do it for any other person. The thing is that if you look into Joshua 1 verses 8, Joshua 1 verses 8, it says, This book of law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it, why? Day and night, that you may observe to do all that is written on it, for you will make your way prosperous. My question to you this afternoon is, who makes your way prosperous? Is it God? Is it God? Is it God? This book of law shall not depart from your mouth, for you shall meditate on it. Who meditates on it? It's you. You have got the responsibility so that you may be careful to do what is written on it. Who must do it? Is it God? It's you. So that you may make your way prosperous. You have a responsibility. The challenge that we're having here is that we shift the responsibility back to God. Deuteronomy 8, verses 18. This is the verse that changed my life. It said, And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you what? Power. Who empowered 21. It is God who gives you power to get wealth, so that he may establish his covenant that you saw to our forefathers as it is in this day. I look into the word, it is God who gives you what? Power. The word power there simply means favor, anointing, ability, grace, enablement, meeting the right people, wisdom to recognize the problem and solve them. But the most important thing there that you need to know is the purpose of wealth so that he may establish his covenant. That is the purpose of wealth. The way in which I look into myself, I look into myself. When you open up the horse pipe, you want to water your garden. You use a horse pipe. There's a sprinkler there. When you cut the horse pipe after you've closed the water, the horse pipe will be watered on the inside. If you want to transport oil from one country to another, you use pipe. If you check the pipes on the inside, they are oiled. When God needs to transport money from heaven to the churches, he uses me. And when you cut me on the inside, I'll be moneyed. <laughs> if God can get money through you, he can get money to you.
and God bless you. Thank you very much. Another applause for Charles. That was that was awesome. Uh, if we if you cut him, he will be what? Moneyed. So these are the forms that I was talking about. Uh, please complete them and move them to the front. And then uh, you, you gave to most of them. Yes, please. So we are going to compile a database uh, where we will contact you. And some of the presentations that have been made will also email them to yourself. Uh, the coordinator of the tracks just came to tell me that uh, I mustn't forget to say we need to appoint at least one person per country uh, who is going to help mobilize uh, the spirit-empowered churches in that country, uh, especially the business people, so that not one person will be left uh, not knowing about uh, the business. So. Uh, every country represented here, please supply me uh, with the name of one or more people that we can use as coordinators so that they can help to organize uh, yourselves in your country. Uh, the most important part of this Congress is actually what happens after the conference. That's what is very, very important, that what is going to happen after the Congress. Uh, there has been uh, people who were uh, called the interim steering committee, people who were helping to organize uh, the business segment. So we also need people who are going to help bring COP together, AFM International Business Forum together and other forums together. So if you are a member of your church forum or your organization's business forum, please speak to me. Uh, we have signed a memorandum of agreement with COP. We can sign memoranda of agreement with you as well so that we have this network. As I said, when I started, the most important thing is to have Africa trading with herself and to enjoy the wealth transfer that Charles spoke about. Now it is opportunity to ask questions. I'm not sure if we've got a roving mic here, uh, but the room is small enough we can, we, can we can get people to speak aloud. So we'll start with, unfortunately, Matt is gone, but we've got businessmen and women here who could deal with some of the questions. Uh, he said those questions perhaps that are more about uh, himself or his family business, especially the issues of the values and so on. We've got someone here who can take the notes, we'll email it to him. Uh, unfortunately, he has to go to the airport, but we said we will communicate. He will answer some of them whilst we are here, if they are more personal to him. Uh, but if they are generic about business, we would be able to handle them. We've got uh, spirit empowered businessmen and women here with us. So we'll start with. Uh, Mark's presentation, if there are, Matt rather, if there are questions uh, around Matt's presentation. Uh, okay, so we'll handle it. I'll ask uh, uh, Simon to, 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 to grab them from you, so we'll be able to handle them. Are there any other questions specific to Matt's presentation? Going once, going twice, gone. Oh, there's, there's one hand. <laughs> okay, over to you. Uh, please introduce yourself, and if you do run a business, please tell us about it. Maybe you can do some trade here. We want to sign deals, okay? We are business people. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Apostle, you can go for it.
like to say thank you so much to Brother Joseph for the courage that uh, is within him. Uh, we heard all of us that uh, uh, he went into brokering. He didn't have the ways and means of running businesses, but uh, he believed in, in himself by saying, yes, I can do it. And he went ahead, he found people, and he managed the people. They made money in the Christian way. I think that was so encouraging to me as uh, I listened to him. Now, I would like to uh, maybe to speak to ourselves that uh, let us be encouraged because the things of God like we have heard the last speaker saying, uh, he based his argument on the word that uh, there is so much wealth that can be transferred to many of us. When uh, you look around into Africa, I think with due respect I want to say that uh, uh, there have been people from uh, other continents who came into Africa and uh, got a lot of wealth and unfortunately some of the wealth that they got left injuries onto, uh, onto us Africans. For example, when you get into Africa, there are so many ditches, there are so many pits that has been left with an uh, environmental uh, issue. So. I think this forum is uh, a call for all of us to realize that we can be brokers in a way. Uh, look at the Britons. Look at the Europeans. They've got the, the acute of uh, uh, creating wealth. But uh, when you get into these countries, there is not much wealth. The wealth is here in Africa. Look at what God has blessed us with uh, uh, here in Africa. There is uh, so much resources, there is so much materials, but uh, it is the ability that we don't have to, uh, I mean, turn those resources into, uh, into wealth. So I call upon all of us to emulate Joseph, who became a broker, and uh, today he is uh, a millionaire. I would want to have a chat with Joseph. I thank you. <laughs> okay, so it was more of an encouragement. Uh, it was not a question. We'll go to uh, the hand just under the camera there. Yeah, I'm Jonas from Ghana. My question is very simple. I know all what you have taught us, we are going to implement it and we'll do it. But what can we do that after we are dead and gone, our children can continue? Because I've seen one thing in Africa that when we run business, when we die, the business died that day. Thank you. Very good question. And then we'll take uh, the one in the, in the middle. Yeah. Okay, greetings in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. My name is... Apostle Lucky, I'm from uh, Emalatheni. Uh, I'm the regional leader uh, with the network of Word and Life. So I'm running a... Uh, just to explain, Emalatheni, it's a, uh, an area in South Africa. It's formerly called Wheat Bank, but that's where they mine uh, coal. Oh, it's an energy place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm so excited to, to be the part of this Okay, okay, Jean, because in Emalathlin we've got engineers, those are qualified, and then they're working on the street without work. I think our brother Joseph, uh, also I really appreciate the presentation, but it was so quick. If we can have maybe a hard cop of it, it will, yes, it will, it will also help us. And then what I want just to say, I'm, I'm running the, the, it's an overnight facility where I take all the, the street, uh, guys and putting them in but my vision is to is to is to run a a, a day day to day facility 
uh, on those people who are, who are staying on the street. Uh, thank you very much. I think if we can have business ideas with him, he can help us also there. Thank you. Okay. If I understand the question, it's how do we uh, encourage the engineers uh, who are qualified but they cannot either uh, find work or start their own uh, businesses? And, and obviously, uh, he cites uh, the overnight facility that he's running. I think I saw the last hand here in front. Are you, are you taken care of? Okay, I'll ask a, a question about ethics. Uh, you know, having been in business for a while and especially dealing uh, with, with government, uh, there, are, there are those brown envelopes uh, that uh, officials or government ministers want to, uh, uh, to talk to you about. Uh, before they sign on the deal that uh, they want to give to you. So I would like to know if you've had an experience like that, and if you did, how did you deal uh, with such uh, approaches? Thank you very much. Um, our pastor from Zambia, uh, thank you very much for the uh, acknowledgement. Um, first, I think um, uh, pastor asks of... Uh, the legacy, how do you transfer this uh, legacy to generations to come? And I think that is what is very, very important. Most African businesses, when one generation is over, they don't have the other one. Um, I have believed to know that it is not about having a business. I have my philosophy is that not like taking a business and handing over to your family and transferring it, no. Once you get competent people to manage it and you can go on the stock, or you can have equity for competent and internal staff to manage it well. It can, so there are so many forms of it. And I think you have to look at it and see that the business is not at your time. So like as Matt was saying, that it's not the seed that you eat, the fruit, that is what is beneficial. So try that as you are going, knowledge is there, you add knowledge, you add education to it, you develop it, you buy knowledge. And that is why this, the business network it's a very, I would say that it's a God-given mystery. Um, just as we launched the Church of Pentecost one, I was looking for someone in um, GIS data, somebody who is very, very on geographical mapping data. I got someone in the U.S., and without any consultation, he was a member, and he gave, she gave me that idea, very freely contacted people in the U.S. to support me. Sometimes not to be led into wrong hands, that is why this network, it is very, very good. And I think if we do that, it will go. So it goes also to the engineers that if we have COP and then AFM here, and then we partner, and some engineers in Ghana are miners that can come and have some exchange ideas. We also can transfer those ideas there. We cross exchange so many kind of platforms that will help. I'm telling you this church of God will continue to grow very mightily. Because once you need some ideas from, let's say, a country, you need a consultant, you need a due diligence, you need so many information to be able to attest before you do it. And that process, anything can happen. But if you have someone who is a professional, some like they can be even a tender, a tender that is happening in Ghana, and I don't have it, but I can contact some network here who has it, or in other country, it can be very helpful. So it's a platform that we can build up and then we can have much experience and much knowledge. The last one is about government dealings. In fact, it's a serious challenge in Africa. Africa is perceived as any kind of business that we do in Africa. You must pay bribe, you must see people, you must contact people. And it's, it's one of the deficiency of the African too that have accepted a look. There are processes and principles I don't want to comply with. But I think that you must stand on your core values. Your core values will eliminate you and then let you ride. I have when I began my business and then I was doing privately with that government, when I moved into government, these are serious challenges that comes all the time. But you must stand on your feet. I have learned to know that there are two types of money that you have to you cannot get in this in the world two types of money. Money that God will give you and the money that you struggle for it. 
So the money that you struggle for it, you have to use schemes, you have to use strategy, you have to go to minister's office, you have to go and beg, you have to sit in the house, you have to beg, you have to lobby, you have to be a politician, you have to wear a political party, you have to follow them. And at the end of it all, sometimes they tell you we can't help you. But the money that God gives, if the one doesn't want to give you, God will cut a spell of favor. By the time he sleeps, sleep, he can't sleep. He'll be dreaming and be calling. You. That is what <laughs> Joseph called. So if anybody is disturbing you with corruption, just fast and pray over the person. He will not, he will be like a, the Mordecai and the Haman. By the time you recognize, he has carried all your blessings. And when Haman wanted to kill Mordecai, he, he, Haman, Haman was rather pulling Mordecai. So those things come. Let us challenge it with godly principles that God, it is only you that can make me well. You, if sometimes can be even one billion, but you don't know one trillion is waiting for you. Because what God gives lasts longer than what man can give you. 